Hello, 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 hello. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Glory to God, glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Jesus, hallelujah, we bless God. Hey, wonderful people, let us jump on board quickly. Let us jump on board, let us jump on board. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hello, Nova. Good evening, good evening, welcome, 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 welcome on board, welcome on board everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless you all, welcome on board. Oh, this is another wonderful session that we have tonight. Ooh, glory, glory, day five. We are pressing on, hello Joy, good evening. Day five, day five, we are pressing on, day five, hallelujah. My God, my God. Day five already. Mm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God all the praise. We give God all the praise for His strength, for His grace. Mm. We give Him all the praise. There's no one like unto Him, honestly. There is no one like unto God. There is no one like unto Him. 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 Welcome everyone, welcome. Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome. My God. My God, my God, my God. Kora bande he shokora badas kidash. Hey Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ah, kashete baka soto robate ya. Le raboto shabande kerebe ko sokori amahande. La buru taleke shekere manto ya nasi kadeya. Neria Bahade Shoto Robo Bobo 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 Kora Baba 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 Baku Sakaria Bahatali Skete. Come on, let's come on board. Sister Joy, your friend's been accepted. I've just gone into the group and done it now. I was saying to my wife earlier, I said, Prayer is one thing. As many people that are willing to want to pray, they got to be allowed to come. It's no charge, <laughs> it's no fee, there's no bringing of any kind of thing to join and all that. We are excited to see people who, who are willing to pray. Like I said in the group the other day, I think this morning I put that in the group, I believe, or yesterday. This morning. when it comes to this fasting and prayer we're doing these 20 days you are investing in in a decade now most people didn't realize it they thought <clears throat> we're just praying for the year but we're actually making an investment for a decade this is the beginning of not just a year but <clears throat> a decade <laughs> my voice is a little gone but we'll pray in the ways we're just coming back not too long ago from spa from our prayer meeting uh, church prayer meeting strategies prayer and actions 
was an amazing time in God's presence. But I'm just waiting for all the people to join so we can run on. But today is another day. Oh, my God, Lika Boso Tombre de Hebacade Shotoria Mahasaka de Cadabo Shatalika Leranto Shaban de Condros Kidi Brigada Yana Masse Keria Bacato Bosa de Ruski de Brege de Lebebe Bebe be Shatayalaba. Hey, Victoria, welcome, welcome. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. We bless God for His kindness. We bless God for His mercies. We thank Him for His grace. We thank Him for His love. We bless His name. Ah, manto shatangre de balia mahasoto robo shakanteria bakoska de raba ba 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 kuraka shekere boto lobo satayeba. We thank God. We thank God. There is no one like unto Him. There is no one like unto him. Let us just get our hearts ready for what God will be doing tonight in prayer, speaking to us. Welcome, welcome, Angela. Welcome. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. We thank God for his mercies and his grace. We thank God for his kindness and his love. We thank him. We thank him. Father, we bless you, O oh God, for another time gathering again with your people. We do not take this time for granted, O oh God, but we understand, O, oh, that your mercy endures forever. This is another opportunity you've given us, not just to pray by ourselves, but to collectively come corporately in prayer to you, O oh God. Hence, we ask in that we will align with what your spirit, O oh God, will lead us tonight, that we buy into the mind of the spirit tonight, O oh God. We do not want to work out of the flesh, but we want to buy into the mind of the Spirit, O God. We bless God, we bless God for His mercies. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory, God. We thank you, O oh God, for this time, but we also prepare our minds, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for what you've done for us in all these days running to this fifth day. We thank you, O oh God, we account it because we're seeing your grace. We're seeing your mercy manifest in our lives, so we are counting. And then we bless you, O oh God, so far we've seen your mercy and your grace manifest heavily in Lord in our lives, and we bless you for it. Oh, we give you all the glory, God. I put in the group this morning and I made mention that this, this was not to discourage anybody, but to encourage us. You see, but what we're doing is not a quick fix scheme. You know, it's not a get rich scheme. It's not a quick fix scheme. However, it can fix the situation quickly. <laughs> How God works. It's not a quick fix scheme, so it's not a place where people come in and say, I just want things fixed in my life quickly. However, I would also announce things can get fixed quickly, even quicker than you expect. You know, because I, I often say this to balance our expectations so we don't come um, thinking that, oh, once I come in there, they told me, you know, things will just, oh yeah, that is the kind of God we serve. Things can turn out quicker than you expect. Bible said while we're speaking he heard us so uh, that is the kind of God we serve but we bless him we bless him because he excites us the just the thought of him just the idea of the fact that we have a relationship with him it is so comforting and so exciting we thank him for that father we cannot thank you enough we cannot appreciate your spirit enough Oh God, we bless your name, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We bless your name. Radeka de Shotom Bregede Balamasi Katobo Sade Rako Shaka Bayende Hesika Liabaha. Oh my God, we bless you. 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 Ye Kada da 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 da
Hey, canto re de shata bru de gede skataya. Reken de lele bro bo 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 shikiri ba 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 bo saya. Mukorante kate kadosi kaba melabronte li kabo shikira gaski da ba ye. My God, we bless your name, O God. Ye ken de le bo sa da gra da 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 ba ba ba. Rakoto mo so koria ba kata liya mehe se kere ba kato bo se ge. Ira dan de he shoko raba de skadi kabaya. Reken de bro tololo bo si kaliya ba handro goshke de braga da ye ne bo sa ta. Rabushki de be kata liya mehe so koria mahande. I want to just uh, bring part of what we pray tonight in um, in the prayer meeting in the evening three hours ago. What we prayed was very um, strong on my heart. It is very necessary that we we mention this, especially for the fact that a lot of great things will be happening in your life during and after this day, this twenty days going forward. It is good to strike a balance to bring us to that point where we understand certain things so it helps us so we don't miss out on the opportunities that God has laid out for us i want to read james james chapter 4 james chapter 4 we read it in the prayer many not too long ago and i want to read that again james chapter 4 we were praying for the spirit of humility we were praying for the spirit of humility and I, I deem it necessary for us to pray that because I know that we will be basking in God's abundance, God's awesomeness. It is very important that we are humble for the people that were alive earlier on with us would have prayed this prayer however it is still in my heart to bring it up James chapter 4 quickly from verse 6 or rather from verse 5 says do you think the scriptures have no meaning they say that God is passionate that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him Verse 6, which is the point of emphasis, it says, and he gives grace generously. It stops there. Good evening, Sister Dawn. Yes, um, Angela is online. God bless you. He gives grace generously and it stops. Then it continues to say, because I like, I like the fact, you see, I like the way the scriptures are laid out. You see, if, 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 James chapter 4 verse 6 had stopped with the A part. A lot of people would have run and misunderstood it. Oh, another Angela. God bless the other Angela. <laughs> Amen. Uh, a lot of people would have run with it and misunderstood what it is saying. Now, if you're joining this prayer meeting, if you're joining this group, just to give a little bit of structure, we, we look at the Bible verse and we pray. We pray strategically as the Spirit directs us. So, do not... Um, count it, do not see it surprising if you see that we stop and we're looking at scriptures, I think it's very important if if the writer of the book of James had stopped at verse 6, the A part which says, and he gives grace generously a lot of people would have run with it misunderstood it and not really fully understand what the implication of that word is about right but then it continues in the B part and says, as the scriptures say, God opposes the proud. My God. But gives grace to the humble. Now, that is a little bit surprising because it began with the opening of verse 6 saying, God gives grace generously. So I would assume that he just gives grace to everyone, irrespective of who you are, don't matter what you do. Just give your grace. Just go ahead, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. There is, there is grace for you to do whatever you want to do. You know, I don't care if you hate on people. I don't care if you lie on them. 
if you malign, you gossip about them, you backbite them, you attempt to destroy, assassinate their character. I don't care if you try to steal from them. I don't care whatever you try to do. You live in sin. You live in iniquity. I don't care what you do. Now the grace of God is there. So people would have people would have, would have run with that and not fully understand what that verse implied. So you have to elaborate a little bit on it on the B part and say God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble verse 7 says so humble yourselves before God resist the devil and he will flee from you then it took it a little further to suggest that you don't actually have authority to resist the devil if you're if you're not humble can we can we see how all this link together? You, you, you actually don't have the, the right or to, to, to begin to resist the devil and consider him to flee if first of all you yourself is not humble, you're not submitted to God, which means you're not under authority. <laughs> oh God. Now, for, for the people that have children, you will observe that if you have older kids and younger kids or every one of us who have grown in a family situation or perhaps a job, you will notice that, okay, let's use a job. You will notice that if your supervisor is disrespectful to the manager in front of you, there is a tendency that you will be disrespectful to the supervisor because in your mind he's not under authority now you you may not realize how you do it but then you you can talk back at him and say how can i respect you or honor you when i can actually see that you were not submitted under authority you are disrespectful to the boss for most people that is what the devil say to us when we go to bind him he just laughs and walks away and say you you that has no covering you that is not submitted, you that live the way you want, that you know have your own rule book. You don't you actually don't have authority over me. So it is important. Verse 8 says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. My God. Oh Jesus. So if you're online, <laughs> I, want it, I want us to pray. Let us come repentant before God and, and ask for mercy. As we ask for mercy, let us pray that every atom of pride in us will be taken away. Paul said this, I boast. If I boast, I boast in the Lord. If I've got to boast, my boast will be in the fact that I'm enjoying the mercy of God. I'm loved by Him. If I've got to boast, I've got to boast. Oh, it looks yeah. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. I trust your husband's getting stronger. If we've got to boast, it's got to, we got to boast in the fact that we're enjoying of God's mercy. We're, we're enjoying of His kindness, of His embrace, of His care, of His love. That is where we should boast. That is where boasting comes in. So I want us to pray and ask God that God will keep us humble. Oh God, we pray tonight, oh God. Oh, Jesus. God will keep us humble. Help us. Give us the grace to be humble. The grace to be humble. We ask, oh God, read us of all pride, Father Lord. Yes, yes, Sister Joy. Let there not be any kind of pride hiding somewhere in me. Squeeze it out of me. Stretch me, God, till every pride is drained out of my system. Oh, God, stretch me, oh, God, stretch me, bring me to the point, oh, God, where I'm totally surrendered to you, God. 
where there is no atom of pride in me, God, we ask tonight, Lord, give us the grace to come to you, Lord, in total humility, O oh God. In total humility, O oh God. In total humility, O oh God. Oh God, First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Father, we ask, O oh God, Lord, bring us to that place of humility, O oh God. Bring us to that place where you exalt us in your time, in your time, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, stretch us, Lord. Stretch us, O oh God, stretch us, O oh God, stretch us, O oh God. We want to be humble. Welcome, Michael. We're praying for God to give us the grace to be humble. We want to be humble, O oh God. We go, oh, shut up. That is it that, that thing that makes us to be unnecessarily angry, to be unnecessarily, to take offense unnecessarily, you know, to feel like, you know, we're full of something and just feel like, you know, no one can mess us around. Just walk away. You see, there's a fine line from, from most times being confident. Most times you, you, you can just sweep in the pride when you can't say sorry you can't apologize you can't you know you can ask for mercy you can ask someone for help you know you can ask someone for direction you begin to slip into pride without knowing they say that is the reason why we're asking that god god by his spirit will search our hearts and take out every every trace of pride inside of us everything that resembles pride everything everything that resemble that have the look of pride everything that look like pride in me take it away whatever gives me that look of pride the bible calls it a proud look a proud look everything that look like pride everything that look like pride in me that is not of you every way that i i carry out things any way that i carry myself that does not glorify you everything that look like pride on the inside of me lord take Take it out of me. Take it out of me. Let no pride be found in me. Let no pride at all be found. Let there be no trace of pride in me. Let there no, no way. Let, let there be no trace. Proverbs chapter 6 says, A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that see, that shed innocent blood, and heart that, that, that devise that wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speak at life, and he that so had discord among brethren. God doesn't like these things. God detests pride. God detests pride strongly. And so pride would not be found in me. Let, let pride not find any place in me. Anything in my life, this is your prayer tonight. We're praying. Anything in my life that resembles pride, any look in me that does not glorify God. I'm not talking about self-confidence. I'm not talking about self-worth. I'm not talking about all that. No, whatever is in me that does not glorify God, anything in me that does not give God glory, if it is the way I look, the way I carry myself, if it doesn't give God glory, then it is pride. It's as simple as that. There is nothing to, there, there is no hiding around this one. There is no playing around this one. Whatever in me that does not glorify you, any way I carry myself, any way I understand myself that does not give Give God the glory. It is pride. Take it out of me, Lord. Let it not be found in me. Let it not be found. No, let it not be found in me. Let it not be found. Let, let it not have any place in me. Take it out of me. It cannot take me to my next place. It cannot take me to my next level. Let it not be found in me. Let pride not be found in me, God. Take it out of me. Call out pride. Anybody around me that has the tendency this it'll make me proud for lord shift them shift them away from me any conversation that will make me proudful shut it out of my life god now this is a very difficult prayer i know a lot of you may not have had this kind of prayer before but it is strong it is strong any kind of conversation any kind of transaction any kind of relationship that has a tendency to make me proudful shift it away from me god i don't want that i don't want to be proudful i don't want Want you to resist me the bible said god resists the pride he resists the proud rather and gives grace to the humble i want to have grace i want to have grace i don't want to have pride i want to have grace i need the 
grace of God. I need a grace. Yes, Lord, expose all pride in me, oh God. Let me find it out and take it out of my life. Expose, expose every hidden pride. A proud look, even a proud look, expose it out of me, oh God. Take it away out of me. Let it, let it go out of me. Rid me of every proud, oh pride. Rid me, rid me of every pride. Rid me of proud look. Rid me of pride, prideful and proudful relationships. Rid me of anything that resembles pride, oh God. Rid me, oh God. Rid me, rid me. Rid me of pride. Rid me of pride. The writer of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 16 says this, these six things that the Lord hates. God hates pride. Yes, seven are an abomination unto, unto him. You know what the first thing is? A proud look. God detests pride. God doesn't like pride. Oh, God. God. Oh, we got to pray this prayer. We got to pray this prayer. A lot of things are dependent on this prayer. We got to pray this prayer. We got to change our posture today. In the presence of God, we got to change our posture. Our posture has got to be a posture of humility. In the presence of God, that is what God kept hitting, hitting on us earlier on when we were praying. He said, you got to change your posture. Your posture must be a teachable posture. A posture that receives instruction, direction, and teaching. A posture that is willing to learn. That is the posture we're taking in today. So we are asking tonight, God, give us that grace. We want to be humble, renew a right spirit of God within us. We, didn't, we renew that spirit of God. We, we, need, we need to be aligned with you correctly. Our spirit of God to be aligned with you correctly, oh God. Take, take pride away from us, God. Take, take pride away from us. Let it not be found amongst us, oh God. Welcome, Brad. We're praying. Continue. We're continuing with a prayer, prayer about pride, about pride and humility. Take pride away from us. We 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 can't associate with anything that is that that looks like pride. Take it away from us. Hmm. You know. Still in this in this spirit of this prayer, I did mention it when we we're praying late earlier on. And God God said to me, the Spirit of God said to me, one of the reasons why his emphasis on us today in today's prayer is so much on humility, is so much on um on being humble before him, being teachable, is because of the weight of what is coming on us. Or the weight of what is already on us. For some, it is the weight that is already on you. When I mean the weight, it's not negative weight. It is a good weight. You can call it greatness. You can call it doxa. You can call it glory of what is on us. It is very important. Now, on this broadcast, for the people online now and the people that will watch this broadcast, I'm not saying we're better than any other person. No. But there are strategic people on this broadcast that the weight of God's glory on you is so huge that your physical strength cannot carry it. The only thing that will carry that glory, the weight of it, is humility. And that comes by you bowing before him. I gave an analogy whilst we're praying in the spa this evening and I said now I go to the gym and work out and I coach people as well and I said if someone walks into the gym and the desire to want to build muscles quickly or someone wants to trim they want to lose weight and then let's go with the one that want to build muscles and then he sees me because I've been working out for a long time. He sees me bench pressing 200 kg. Now you see me on the bench pushing that amount of weight, 200 kilograms of weight. I'm benching it freely, easily. Now he believes automatically that 
For him to be as fit as I am, he has to carry that amount of weight. And without instructions, begin to jump on the bench and try to begin to push that weight. Not realizing that one of the the trick in pushing that weight and getting the desired result is having the correct posture on the bench. You see, because without the right posture, you can push that amount of weight as I push. But instead of benefiting, you'll be doing yourself harm. So God is saying that there are a lot of weight. There's a lot of thing coming on you. The right posture will allow you to get the desired result. And that posture of humility coming before him, humbling ourselves. And one thing I said to my wife when we got home, I think I mentioned in the broadcast as well. God said, if he has to direct the play in your life, you must allow him to choose the cast. Now, I'm taking my time to say this because this word lines up with what we were teaching on Sunday. For, for many of us, because of the dimension, because of the, the, the magnitude of what God is doing and bringing on us, God has to choose the cast in your life. The people that will play significant roles, strategic roles, no matter how small or how big those roles are in your life, God has to choose them himself. 1 Samuel chapter 30, which is one of our core verses for this year and then for these prayers that we're doing. When David, taking my time to say this so you can get it, and your spirit ready to pray. When David and his men came from battle and discovered that Ziklag had been plundered by the Amalekites, and David went to God and said, should I pursue them? I'm paraphrasing, and then God told them, pursue, you will, you will recover all. Right. On their way going, the person that God had chosen and positioned strategically to give them direction in recovering everything that was stolen from them was someone who one was a slave, an Egyptian, abandoned by his master and was sick to death. That does not qualify any kind of person that you want to give you direction, does it? That that is that is not that does not look like that does not have a description of whoever you want to meet to give you help. Because on plain sight, that person already is in need of help themselves. See, but <laughs> But God, God is saying, if I've got to direct the play in your life, if I've got to decide how things play out in your life, then you've got to give me full control to choose the cast of who plays what role in that play. <laughs> yes, sir. He will, he will qualify the unqualified. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because in the heart of humility, as we pray on and press into this year, now for, for, for someone on this broadcast right now, you have just received direction as regards to your next business. Simple as that. you got to be very sensitive and your heart very humble because there is someone that God has positioned to give you direction. That will bring you the result that you've been craving for years. That person has no qualification with regards to what you need. But in them, God has planted your result, your answer, your direction, your solution. And you've got to be sensitive because for most of them, you, you have to help them first. Before you receive direction, it's not a bribe. 
before your mind starts running in different places. It's not a bribe. The Bible said that when David's men met this individual, they, they did not ask for direction from the individual. They did not say nothing about what they were looking for, who they were, where they are coming from, nothing. They first identified that the individual was hungry. My God. You have to be very sensitive. I'm speaking prophetically now. You have to be very sensitive to the people that God is bringing around you in this season of your life. Be very, 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 very careful. The first thing they did, they fed the individual. <laughs> Baked cake for him. They made sure he is comfortable. Now, these are people who are in need, whose wives, whose children, whose properties have been plundered, which means they are desperately in need. But they met someone, did not even discuss about their own individual need. They started solving the need of this individual. Now I'm talking to someone, it's hard. This word is hard for you. Calm down, I'm talking, it is hard for you. Don't go nowhere. Because God is solving the mystery around your situation via this word. Tonight, things, things change around you. Tonight, things change around you because... You're receiving strategies, pointers on how things play out in your life in the next seven days. <laughs> God. <laughs> ah, God. So 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 9 says, So David and the 600 men set out, and they came to the brook Besor. But 200 of the men were too exhausted to cross the brook, so David continued the pursuit with 400 men. Verse 11, along the way, they found an Egyptian, one, an Egyptian man, in a field and brought him to David. Didn't ask him any question. The Bible said they gave him some bread to eat and water to drink. These are people in need because... There is your desperation has a tendency to blind you from possible likely solution around you. Your desperation, your need, when you're when you're in so much need, you you need something solved for you. It has a tendency to blind you. It has a tendency to blind you from possible situations around you. So you gotta be very, very, very careful. So they gave him bread to eat and water to drink. They also gave him part of a thick cake and two clusters of raisins. For he hadn't had anything to eat or drink for three days and nights. The man did not say, oh my God, Jesus, this word is for me. My God, who else is getting this word? I just want to make sure you're getting this word. Responses. I want to make sure you're getting this word. So, so I, I know I'm speaking to someone. Put, put fire, put yes, put whatever you got to put there. Let's just be sure that this word is coming across. One thing that I never saw all the time that I've read this verse was the spirit of discernment. Oh, God. He said, when you walk in the spirit, the pressures in your life and your need will not have the capacity to blind your discerning. Why did I say that? I'm going by the literal translation of what the Bible said. The man did not say he was hungry. The man did not say anything was wrong. Thank you. Thank you all for responding. Thank you.